All right, guys, welcome back. Joe again here from Third World Aquatics, and we're back at it. I got my partner with me, Jesse. And I'm Jack. That's right. Oh, wise guy. Well, you guys haven't seen this in a while. Unfortunately, we have problems with the thousand gallon aquarium. The heart of the entire beast is leaking. Let's get into it. All right, so here is the dealio. System's been up and running now for probably 30 months. And this is the Hammerhead Gold, the hybrid style. So we are pumping about 6,000 gallons per hour. But unfortunately, it does appear that the seal has gone in this guy. So I was like, crap. And, and I've been kind of, you know, really not much you can do. It's been leaking little by little. So sometimes it's picking up. You can see we're spraying right there from centrifugal force. But I've been kind of watching it for a while. I went ahead and ordered the parts. They're here. I mean, that thing's pretty nasty inside. But there's only one way to make this happen, and that's obviously to shut down and change out the seals. The more I thought about this, I was like, crap. What if this turns into a, an hour project and something goes sour and I'm got the same tore apart and all of a sudden I can't get it back together for God forbid reason you just never know but whatever the case the system is down as soon as I turn this thing off so that being said I got a hold of reflow the other day bulk resupply I went ahead and ordered a whole new one it just showed up but one thing that kind of caught my eye in the box was this guy right here they don't send you the other impeller, so if you wanted to change the gallons per hour, which i got to believe the smaller propeller does 4,500 gallons an hour, you got to call in to get that particular item. They used to ship that out, but, I mean, granted, I don't need it. It was just kind of interesting in the fact that you have to, uh, to reach out to them. But, so here's the new one right here, and obviously the goal is to shut down the system and kind of go as quickly as I possibly can so the system's not down for a prolonged period of time. So obviously we just got to shut off this return line right here, and over here is the supply line. So it's just a matter of breaking those two right there. Obviously shut both valves down, pull out the quick disconnects, yank out the motor, and then with the pipe wrenches, go ahead and break this guy here, and this guy here. So in reality, just to do a quick motor change out, that should be no more than probably 20, 30 minutes at tops. I just gotta put on some pipe dope here, use the pipe wrenches, and then just do the quick conversion onto the new guy right here, and then we can be back online. I was just nervous at the fact of thinking I'm gonna go ahead and change out these seals, and next thing you know, an hour or two or three goes by, and then I'm really jammed. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and shut down. Now, I will tell you this, now that it's been probably 30 months that this thing has been up and running, for the most part, I gotta believe most of you guys have already seen this, this filtration system. You know, as, as cool as it looks, and now that, like I said, so many months have gone by, there are some issues with it. I mean, in reality, this is one right here. There should have been two motors side by side. It'd be as simple as shutting down this one and firing up the second one. Obviously, I didn't account for that within the manifold system by actually having a backup motor. As simple as plug and play and you're done just by changing a couple valves. But the other thing I've noticed is even though the fact that I've got an emergency overflow here and here, where's one at? Oh. I got the big one up there, which it comes down under the catwalk and dumps into chamber three. Obviously, if something were to go wrong with chamber one, it, it, type, it, it bites in right there. Obviously, this one here is for the protein skimmers back there. And then this one is from chamber three, as far as an overflow right there. And then I actually have the ability to drain chambers five and four. Oh, a wise guy, a head clunker, eh? right there but i guess what i'm getting at is we have had probably three situations where we have lost power everything settles down this pipe right here takes the blunt of the water and i guess what i'm getting at is if we fully shut down i lose probably 30 gallons of water and that might not sound like much but that's not good at all i mean that causes for a major problem would it it's time to turn back on. So I'm trying to figure out 
a way to somehow capture that water so that if there is a power outage and we are not here when it goes back online, the motor's not sucking dry. So that's something I think I'm going to be looking at in the near future. For now, let's go ahead and pull out this motor. Let's get the next one in, and then we're probably going to get into what it takes to change out the seals on a hammerhead. Let's get into it. So real quick, just before we get into this, I just realized I forgot to tell you guys what I'm getting ready to do, only for the fact that you're probably thinking, well, wait a minute, you just said you're getting ready to shut down and you're going to lose 30 gallons of water. Where's the water going to go, even for that quick 30-minute motor changeout? And I guess the answer is this. As pathetic as this sounds, what I have to do is block this emergency overflow up here, which is coming from the coast-to-coast -coast overflow box dumps it right here. If I pretty much cap that line, I have the ability to take that extra 30 gallons of water, maybe 40, and hide it within the main tank. So I literally take the running elevation that you see right now, I will raise that thing up probably a good inch, inch and a half, and pretty much hide all the water in the main tank for this quick temporary outage. Kind of a little trick. Obviously, it's not the best thing to do, but in this situation... Oh, All right, now let's get into it. Okay, as you can see, I've got the motor powered down. All the valves are closed and pretty much everything's been pumped to the top of the tank. And this is what it all comes down to right here. We've got about four or five inches before water will start to arrive in the emergency overflow system. For the most part, I think we're looking good. See, I've got this pipe up inside there. It's pathetic, I know, but that's gonna give me the one hour I need to do what I gotta do. Being said, the clock's ticking. Let's go ahead and rip this bad boy out. Okay, the old motor is out. There's the new motor, and I'm getting ready to put in the supply and return lines. I went ahead and put on some pipe dope. Okay, it's been about a half hour, 45 minutes, and we are completed. There is the new motor, no leaks. It's a little bit loud, but I gotta believe that the bearings are still probably breaking in, so I'm gonna give this a good 24 hours. Appears to be no problems yet. I definitely noticed that, man, salt water and this floor don't quite get along too well. You guys remember way back in the day, I painted this floor, and man, look what that, look what that salt water did. Tore that paint right up, so much for that. All right, so motor's in, we're up and running, and obviously here is the one that came out. Get a little bit better view of it. Obviously there's salt creep all over the place. And if we take a closer look inside here between uh, where the motor and the pump come together, actually I can almost see right there that there could be part of the culprit right there. Looks like it's broken away. So that's probably a good reason why it's leaking right there. But I'm kind of glad that the new one is hooked up. So I have a little bit more breathing room to work on this thing. Man, look at this thing. Woo! Yeah, that thing's tore up. Yep. That's no good. All right, so we'll go ahead and start working on this here in a little bit. I just wanted you guys to see where we stand right now, and now let's start talking about what it takes to put on a, uh, a new wiper and seal on a hammerhead. All right, guys, let's get into replacing the seal on this hammerhead. Obviously, the very first step is to remove these seven bolts around the perimeter. This is 716, so I've got the 716 wrench right here. Let's do this, and then we'll move into the next step. Okay, so we have removed the seven bolts around the perimeter, so this portion now has been released. This is the actual pump housing. They call this portion right here the volute. Now remember, you can actually leave this attached to the front here. So I could have just taken these seven bolts out and slid the motor right out of position and left the supply and return line pipes screwed in. But in this case, I just went ahead and removed the entire thing from the piping, so I had the whole thing up here on the shelf. So now that this has been removed, the very next step now is to remove the impeller. All right, so if you're having problems removing the impeller, which should come off counterclockwise, you can put a screwdriver right back here inside the fan motor. There's a little screw back there. Oh, 
wise guy. <laughs> As you can see, I can actually turn the impeller, the screwdriver. So I should be able to hold this with my right hand and turn this counterclockwise and spin this off. Now, if this does not come off, the next step would be to remove these three screws around the fan housing, remove the fan, and then get a set of vice grips and actually grab the shaft. And I can tell you just a few seconds ago I tried doing this and this is not coming off. This should be hand tight so we might already have a problem. Okay so I went ahead and removed the fan cover. You can see the fan right there. It's kind of nasty and dirty. There's the cover. There's the screws. So now we'll go ahead and remove this one screw and pull out the fan. Okay as you can see the fan has now been removed and now we have the ability to either put a bigger screwdriver in right here or a set of vice grips and grab right onto the end of the shaft. Okay, with a set of vice grips on, that locked in the back portion of the shaft. And just a little bit of extra pressure, it took two hands. This time I could just went ahead and remove it counterclockwise. So now we are good to go on the prop. Okay, so while we get this portion open right now, the next step is to pull out this seal that's on the impeller. This is what the new one looks like right here. So what we need to do is we need to pry this out with a screwdriver right between the seal and the impeller. So we're gonna go ahead and work on that portion right now. So that appears to be coming off pretty easy. All you really gotta do like I said, it's just kind of jam it between the two and just kind of walk it around and you'll see that this seal starts to work its way out. So that's the old one. We'll go ahead and clean all this up and put in the new one. So just before we go to put the impeller seal in, you want to put just a little bit of bead of silicone around the inside here just to help kind of tighten things up and uh, make for a nice good seal. It's not really probably required, but the instructions do say to go ahead and put that on. Obviously, next part, just go ahead and lay this in there evenly, firmly, and then just go ahead and push straight down, and then we're moving on to the next part. Okay, now that that's fully pushed down inside, we're good to go. It's a nice, even, smooth surface. So with that being said, we can go ahead and just get that to the side. All right, next step is to go ahead and remove these four 916 bolts of stainless steel. There's uh, two on this side, two on the opposite side, and with that we'll be able to remove the other portion of the pump housing. Okay, those four bolts have been removed, and now we should be able to just go ahead and slide this thing off here. Ooh, buddy, that's pretty nasty. This has been running for about 30 months, and this is not looking that good. As you can tell, the seal is definitely come off right there. So let's go ahead and clean all this up so it makes a little bit more sense and then we'll get into the next step. Alright guys, I went ahead and cleaned this bracket. It was pretty nasty but now we are looking a lot better. So now it's time to remove this old seal. So obviously you want to keep the bracket in this position right here so the holes are up. And The reason why you want to do that is because this has just a little bit of a flare on it. So this is the part that's actually going to come out. So one little trick, maybe just like a roll of tape, keeping this thing up off the ground a little bit. And then we're going to put a socket to get a nice good surface area like you're seeing right now. And then obviously either a rubber hammer or a metal hammer. We're gonna go ahead and pop this guy out and it should fall right down inside the center of the tape. So with that, let's go ahead and knock it out. All right, just before we go ahead and put the seal in, I'm going to put a, just a shot of silicone right around this flat area right here. Right there, so it's on the outer edge of the seal, and then we'll go ahead and pop it in. All right, so I've got the silicone down inside, but one thing I'm noticing right now that obviously this inside diameter and this outside diameter, man, it is a very, very tight fit to the point of it almost feels like it's kind of kinking down on one side and just trying to go in. So I'm probably just going to have to really mess with this. Probably going to have to put the socket 
on this to, to apply some pressure and hopefully it pops down inside. So let's give this a shot. All right, so that wasn't too bad. I just put a little bit of pressure on it and it dropped right in. So I went ahead and took some paper towels, wiped everything down, got a nice clean surface, and we are on to the next step. All right, so just before we go ahead and put on the first piece on the motor, one thing I noticed was that the shaft here was kind of nasty. So one of the things I'm going to do is we're going to take a little bit of steel wool. We're going to be trying to be as least as basic as possible, so it's not like I'm going to put a file on this. I mean, a light wire brush is one thing, but uh, let me go ahead and start off with this, trying to clean this up a little bit, make sure there's nothing here that's you know, going to impede the actual seal itself. One little trick is I'm going to probably plug this in and actually clean it as it's spinning, so obviously be careful doing that or just do it by hand. So let me go ahead and clean up this shaft to make it look a lot better. All right, so I went ahead and turned this on. You can see it's spinning right now. And actually, this is kind of good because the motor is kind of quiet. All right, I went ahead and cleaned the shaft up a little bit. I used some steel wool. I actually had to use a screwdriver to actually get off some harder deposits that were built up around this. And then I used a piece of sandpaper, real light. I mean, this is probably 1,000 grit, like to the point of like nothing there because I don't want to damage this shaft at all. But looking at this kind of close, there might be... Just a little bit of pitting on that shaft. I'm just rotating this real slowly to see what we got going on. All right, so I have everything laid out. We're ready to put everything back together. Obviously, the fan's going to go on first. And obviously, the cover plate. You got a couple of screws there. Over here on the other end, the first half of the pump housing is going to go on with the four stainless steel bolts. And we're going to go ahead and throw on the impeller. As you know, you got a couple of different sizes. This one's going to be doing the 6,000 gallons per hour, and the other one's 4,500 or so, but for this 1,500 gallon system, we need the big boy. So we'll go ahead and throw that on, and then the front portion of the actual pump housing itself, which will be locked in with these six stainless steel bolts. All right, so that being said, let's go ahead and knock this out and bring this motor together. All right, guys, just like that, the motor's been all put back together, so we got new seals, so everything should be good to go from here. So... All right, I appreciate you watching, and uh, hey, you know what to do. We're going to see you on the next video. Till then, we are...